And now a quick word from our sponsors here at Viral Hip Hop News. Yeah, yeah, I just want to tell folks a little more about Breakbeat and what they can, you know, see and check out now. I mean, the first show we launched is the Don't Call Me White Girl show. I don't know if you guys had a chance to check any of the episodes out yet that we dropped last week. But, I mean, she's, you know, she's somebody I call one of my unsigned hypes of Breakbeat. I mean, she's a, a, a superstar, in my opinion. She's going to be mm-hmm. really big. I just love her. She's obviously incredibly funny, but she's also incredibly smart and somebody that's, you know, willing to take on, you know, important subject matters. Um, and uh, so I love that about her. And I think she, you know, she, of course, a lot of people seen her on a million dollars worth of game podcast last year. She was like a, a guest co-host for a couple of months and really blew up the spot on there. That's really yeah. when I first started getting, you know, really hip to her and like, man, she's dope. Like, you know, I, I want to bring her in uh, to break beat. Uh, so I'm really excited about her. And then also, the other person I would call another kind of unsigned hype of breakbeat is Funny Marco. Um, a lot of us have all been follow, following Funny Marco on Instagram these last few years and just laughing our asses off at all the antics and skits and you know pranks and crazy stuff he does on Instagram all the time. But I just feel like you know he's got a really different you know comedic sensibility and he's really funny. And I think he can take the, that 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 humor and those skills and bring them into the podcast world and be, you know, even more more dynamic. So uh, we're doing a show uh, with him called a wrap up show starring Funny Marco that we're about to start um, filming in the next couple of weeks. And we'll be out you know, later this month. Um, we have a, a amazing show called Culturati. Um, that's an audio podcast. It's hosted by. Uh, Kieran Amayo, who's one of the most respected and accomplished black female uh, hip hop journalists for the past, you know, many, many years, started at the source, founded Honey Magazine and former editor in chief at Ebony, among other things. But someone who's been down with hip hop, you know, from the beginning and uh, has a, a really incredible way of telling stories and, and seeing, you know, issues that need to be fleshed out. And she's doing really interesting conversations every week uh or actually every other week on culture Rally that comes out every other week um you know the other big one i want to share is on the documentary podcast side i talked about unsigned hype but uh we are also several months into production on the larry hoover story um and we're telling, telling that in a 10-part series um this will be the first time his story is ever told in any real, authentic, meaningful way. You know, he's just commonly just, you know, kind of put in a box by the mainstream media and, and the gangster criminal side is what you, you know, gets glorified. But he has such an amazing story uh, going back, you know, to the 60s, but still relevant to today in 2021. When you look at, you know, the gun violence issue in Chicago that persists to this day. Uh, you know, when you learn about the story of Larry Hoover and the history of Chicago, you know, you learn a different way of understanding why things are the way they are today. Um, Larry Hoover is the only uh, black gangster in our culture um, who ever got into politics and who ever spoke about, you know, voting and the importance of 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 using political power to bring change in our communities and i think you know that was a an an incredible vision that he was implementing in the 80s and the 90s when he uh reformed himself and renamed gangster disciples as growth and development uh people don't know about all this they don't know you know how he was registering thousands of voters and how 21st century vote was a political organization that was starting to impact the outcome of major elections throughout Chicago, Illinois, and spreading. And, uh, you know, in my opinion, and a lot of others, he's a political prisoner. You know, he was he was due up for parole um, in the early 90s, and he was going to get out, and he was going to take this growth and development. And I believe the world would be a different place right now if, if that had been allowed to happen. But, uh, you know, they brought in these federal charges and, and put him away, you know, and in Supermax, you know, where he's with, you know, El Chapo and, you know, the Unabomber and people like that. He's, you know, totally out of communication and just, you know, um, you know, I think that was all for political reasons. 
um, because they fear this power uh, politically. You know, it's one thing to have power over, you know, criminal activities and mm -hmm. violence and sales of drugs or whatever things in, in, in the black community. But, you know, once you start, you know, talking about empowerment and change and doing something positive and political stuff, it's a whole different uh, thing. So I, I, I really look at him as this incredible uh, figure that whose story just really, really needs to get out there in a truthful way once and for all. And I'm super, you know, excited that his family, you know, has come on board. You know, this is the first authorized telling of the Larry Hoover story. You know, his family's participation. So we've been talking to so many people that, you know, never done any interviews before. And, you know, people don't know how many lives Larry Hoover has changed. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of, you know, men and women uh, who, you know, turn their lives around because of the teachings of growth and development and Larry Hoover and, you know, have become, you know, incredibly productive members of our society that maybe were, you know, incarcerated or involved in, in criminal activities and other, you know, negative activities. And, um, I mean, people don't understand the, the masses of, of, of young, you know, mostly black men and women, but others as well that, um, you know, turn their lives around because of, of Larry Hoover. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big, big story. And then last but not least is the Dave Mays show. Um, yeah, I will be launching my own podcast. So for the first time, I'm going to be, you know, speaking regularly, um, interacting with, you know, movers and shakers, you know, from the culture. Um, you know, I've got, you know, a lot of people that I, I've known all these years and been a part of their lives that I think, you know, we'll have some amazing conversations. And mm -hmm. I, I was always a behind the scenes guy back in the day. You know, that was my my nature. I, you know, I didn't want the attention. I didn't want to get the credit or put my name. Hit, pop, hit, pop, shit, hit, pop, hit, bars is back. Hit, pop, sand hit, in. Oh God, what's up with you? I done watched the niggas do interview after interview They not culture vultures, the culture something they been into So if you never gave them a view, I recommend you do Cause when they question guests, they message is not subliminal It don't matter if you a rookie